God is one, you call us to be one. We pray to be one with all who are made for your image. God, who is three, you call us to be community. May we be one community for all who are called by your name. God, who calls us all by your name, may you come together and praise the name for our rich diversity as our body.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are gathered as brothers and sisters to pray for the visible unity of all Christians. At the heart of our worship is the story of the Good Samaritan, where we hear the divine call to love God, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Glory to you, Father, for you reveal yourself from your creation and call all people to live in your presence. Glory to you, Christ Jesus, for you give yourself entirely to each one of us and invite us to do the same. Glory to you, Holy Spirit, for you gather us together in love and unity. Glory to you, God of love, in whom we are created, redeemed, and made one. Amen. And now let us share the signs of peace with one another. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
A reading from the book of Leviticus. You shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. He had somewhere to be. 
Maybe he had an important errand, something urgent. Maybe he was tired from his long journey, or in a bad mood. And when he saw the man lying on the road, maybe he considered those excuses for not stopping to help. Maybe he was feeling far from God. But something made him stop and put his agenda and his excuses aside. Something moved him to compassion. Despite the obvious fact that the man lying on the road was a Jew, an enemy of the Samaritans, what is Jesus telling us to see differently? What did the Samaritans see? Could it be that within an apparent enemy, he saw his own brother? Or even more radically, that looking upon the physical brokenness and the racial difference, he saw a reflection of himself in that man. Flipping the rules around, can we see ourselves not only as the Samaritan who does the right thing, but as the beaten and broken person on the side of the road? Because we are all broken beggars before the Lord, and it is God who is the ultimate good Samaritan, the one who reaches beyond himself to heal our wounds. Perhaps this parable is not only about us encountering Christ in others who are broken, but also about being encountered by Christ in our brokenness. Because we have been saved by the abundantly merciful love of God, we are called upon to respond to the needs of others around us by giving in the way that we have received, recognizing our own reflection in the people we encounter, seeing them not as unknown others, but as sisters and brothers in the body of Christ. The response of the Samaritan is impressive. Look at his generosity in caring for the beaten man. It says he poured oil and wine on the man's wounds. Oil and wine are not cheap, but the Samaritan poured them out generously. Consider that image of the Samaritan's oil flowing in abundance on the man's wounds. Is that not what like God's love for us? Poured out in abundance? The scripture says he put his journey on hold until the next day to take the man to him and personally care for him, and that he paid richly for the man's care. How selfless, how merciful, how challenging. Because Jesus tells us, go and do likewise. Hearing those words, I find myself hesitant, resistant. Jesus, you're asking too much. Maybe I'll be willing to be a good Samaritan once in a while when I feel like it, when I'm in a good mood or when I have service to share. But what about times when I'm tired or grumpy or feel like I have nothing to give? What about helping people that are ungrateful, people that have hurt me, or people that I have hurt? It seems impossible for me to love with such an abundant love as a good Samaritan. But here's a really amazing thing. It's true, on our own power, we can't exercise such unconditional love. It is beyond our power. It is divine. But that very same divine love dwells within us by baptism, turning impossible into possible. And the paradox is frustratingly amazing that in those very times and situations when I feel unequipped, unable, or resistant to love, that God calls upon me to give, like the Good Samaritan. And if I respond to this call, I find an abundance of his love beyond my own ability, and I truly encounter Christ in the other. One woman who has received a lot of interest in the news lately is Dorothy Day, who knew and lived this reality daily of encountering Christ in the other. She wrote, quote, For a total Christian, the goal of duty is not needed, always prying one to perform this or that good deed. It is not a duty to help Christ. It is a privilege. Is it likely that Martha and Mary sat back and considered they had done all that was expected of them? Is it likely that Peter's mother-in-law grudgingly served the chicken she had meant to keep till Sunday because she thought it was her duty? She did gladly. She would have served ten chickens if she had had them. If that is the way they gave hospitality to Christ, it is certain that that is the way it should still be given. Not for the sake of humanity, 
not because it might be Christ who comes who stays with us, comes to see us, takes up our time. Not because these people remind us of Christ, but because they are Christ, asking us to find room for him. May we also ask for the grace to see Christ and make room for him when we encounter him. Would you stand at me? 